Hey guys, and welcome back to Ryan's EDC Opinionarium. Today we're going to be having a look at several handheld emulators. And um, these are ones I've already been using. I had intentions on unboxing some of them on the channel, but I didn't really get around to it. And um, I'm not going to cough up any excuses. Just been busy and tired. For how long it's been since the last video. Anyhow, our giveaway, I'm going to be filming that the same day as... Today, it'll go for a week deets after this video. So, yeah, and I'm also going to be doing a couple individual videos to fully cover these. But this is just my general opinions on these devices that I have here today. Um, some of you might know what all of these are. Some of you might know what some of them are. And some of you may have never seen even one. Um, as for these two that are in plastic cases, I 3D printed these cases for these. I think they're pretty cool. This one's a little on the flimsier side, so if you're thinking about it, it's worth it still. It's got a little bit of fuzz floating around in there, but it's been fun. Uh, the bigger RG35XXH case has been very nice. Solid feeling. There's some filament for the hinge. This was print in place, so nothing really to it. I did paint these as well, so they're not going to come out colored like that unless you have a multicolored printer, a printer and you can do it that way. Um, let's just set these out to the side because they don't really come with any of this. Now, um, multiple of these came with screen protectors, this one and this one. I don't believe either of these did or that one. Um, they are all USB-C charging. All of them take micro SD cards. Though the only one here that doesn't run off an R, uh, off an, uh, micro SD card is the 405M. And we'll go in order of which I got first and which I got last. The first I really grabbed was actually the Nano. Um, and after the Nano, I bought the 35XXH, which is awesome. And after that, I bought the Q36 Mini from Pow Kitty. So these are in Burnick and Burnick and Burnick. Pow Kitty. I bought the 405M and the Maya Mini original V4. So this is the 2.8 inch screen version. All at the same time. And these were very recent, these two, but they are different. Now, the 405M is the most capable device here. It's also the largest by a slight margin. The uh, XXH is smaller, you can probably see that. I do like my Nano devices, these are great. This guy Fitch, if, Fitch? I can't talk today. This guy fits perfectly in my watch pocket. Um, I wear Wrangler jeans most of the time, so that's, yeah. That fits in my watch pocket, it's a little bulky in there, but it hasn't had any issues. I've dropped it a few times, Times it's got dings. Uh, the only two that have metal shells are these two. These are solid. And then we have the plastic shelled ones. Now, the Mayu Mini was kind of a sensation for a while, from my understanding. And I don't have uh, garlic or onion OS. I don't remember which one it is. On here, but it's been an enjoyable device without that much modification. And that's what I'm really here to talk about today, is what are you going to get out of these? If you have no idea what you're doing... Um, and can basically only add ROMs. Because I am not, by any means, technical. Um, I'm much better with tools and wood and nails and screws. You know, I'm not, I'm not a techie person myself. I'm only 22, and I know very, very little tech-wise. And sorry about the dirty screens here. I know that bugs some people. I use these devices. I use all of them. And you're probably asking me how I use all these devices, and it's because I have different uses for each one. Um, and I'll go over that too. A lot of these are EDCable, uh, especially these two minis. That's very EDCable. And I found through using a phone case on your hip, you can carry this as well if you're not working. Because, I mean, I guess it depends on work, if you're in an office or something. And <laughs> this is getting a little ridiculous. But I've stopped using my phone and social media to the point where I don't, like, I'd rather have an emulator on me than my phone. Um, it's just, there's so many games on your phone that are just pay-to-play or 
there's always someone who's better at it than you, and it's all multiplayer, and that's the thing. Is And, and I'm, I know I'm generalizing here, but as an Apple user, um, the things I do most on my phone is uh, social media and news. Social media news and communication. And I basically just want to limit it down to communication and YouTube. Um, I'm just... My mental health has been in decline. Uh, news is a very bad thing to start watching closely, and social media doesn't help at all either. So, really, I've started turning to emulators more and more for my time passers when I have, you know, I have to take an hour and a half worth of break at my job um, for reasons. I, I, I work a full 12, 13 hour day, and it's just... This is what it is. Um, so, let's really get into the devices here. Let's start small, move on to full-sized. So, we're looking at the three smallest devices. Um, one being in the realm of almost normalness, and then the other two being tiny. The RG Nano, the Q36 Mini, and the uh, MyU Mini, or... I think it's MyU. I've heard people say Miu too, but my instinct is to say Miu because it's M-I-Y. Now, let's uh, let's start with the first I got, the second I got, mini-wise, and then the third. Uh, this is the RG Nano. Aluminum shell. Really like that. Nice buttons. All the buttons are nice. And as I was going to explain, the reason like I like having multiples here is because I can start up one game on each, and then that device is just dedicated to that game primarily until I'm finished with it. And it's like, I didn't need to collect all these, I know. Um, but this one fits in my watch pocket, which means it's really, really carryable. And this is kind of what inspired me to bring handhelds onto the channel, was the tiny ones like these like all three of these i'd call pocketable and this one's watch pocketable uh this one's not because it's a little too long it just protrudes either way you put it it's not going to fit width wise and it's going to poke up height wise this one fits sideways in the watch pocket perfectly you can see in my massive hands it's just an absolutely tiny creature and you're probably wondering how i play the thing um but let's get into it and i'll just show you I mean, I've been working on this level for a few weeks because, again, I only pull it out for a few minutes at a time. Um, and I had actually made a previous video on this device before, but I didn't like how it came out. And I, uh, I wound up just carrying it and seeing where it went. Um, what we're playing right now is Metal Slug Advance. And it's a pretty good game. And I just, I like the, the little challenge every now and again. I was just pulling it out of my pocket, and I found, like, I've seen a lot of people complain about usability with this guy because it's so tiny. People even with smaller hands than I. And I haven't really had any of those issues. I'm not really trying right now because um, I'm trying to record a video, and I can't keep focused. But you probably see how I'm holding it, and that's kind of the key to success with this device especially with giant hands like mine. I was originally trying to cramp up all the way and support it at the back, and that was just way, way too cramped to get anything done. So I figured later on that holding it outspread like this, I can get to the triggers just fine. All these buttons, that's all easy. It just it got so much easier once I started relaxing my hands and just letting it be tiny. Um, and it's like with a bigger device, you're not going to want to do that, really. I mean, I can, but most of the time you want to hold on to it. Like, I don't know, it's just weird how the dy dynamics change. And this is why I like horizontals more. And it's actually that desire for something that was wider that led me to the Q36 Mini. Now, these both run on FunKey OS, which is from Britain. It was an open source and, um... They make their own Funky S, which is a little tiny folding jig. It's adorable. Um, don't know why this is all the way. 
muted here. That's a little weird. Now, this guy had some issues in the pocket. I'm going to be honest there. It's a much cheaper build. It's much cheaper to buy. I got mine for $40 right from Pow Kitty. It was on sale. Um, uh, how you get to the menu for this guy, and, and actually for this guy as well, is you tap that power button, um, and you can cycle through this stuff, and you can exit game. And you'll see that they look basically identical here. Um, and you can change how the background looks, but I haven't really wanted to. They look fine to me. So if we wanted to hop on the game gear, we have a bunch of different games here. Now you'll see a picture in the background, but that's not ever present. That's something that happens for some of the games, not all of them. And I know that there is a way to fix that, the ones that don't have them, but I just haven't really cared to. Um, now this guy is, to an extent, very similar. I will say that it's a lower quality device. But it's held up very, very well. Uh, the screen has taken some cosmetic damage, a few scratches. There's that corner that's, like, delaminating right there. Mostly my own fault. Um, but this guy is very comfortable. I've used it probably the most out of the three tiny ones so far. Um, I don't know what game I just pressed. I don't know. Sonic. And uh, it's just, it's very comfortable. And you can see that the screen looks a little funky. And um, what you do to fix that is you can go right into the settings that it has and hit scaled. And this is the big problem for people with bad up close eyesight is like Game Boy Advance specifically is going to want scaled or it's going to look, it's going to feel really weird. Let's go knuckles for this. And then, I don't think I've actually played this one. I was never much for Sonic, so. But everything works, like, very well. It's very comfortable, even in comparison to the, um, the RG Nano there. And as far as pocketability, it's very pocketable. But again, it gets scratched up pretty easy in comparison because it's all plastic. The buttons work pretty well. Uh, I haven't had any issues with lag or eh, weird tolerances. They feel good. Uh, overall, it feels like a toy, but it is a toy, and that's fine. Uh, the biggest complaint I have about this, when in the pocket, is it has a tendency to turn on and do funky things. You just gotta watch out for that, and I wish there was a printable case like there is for the uh, Nano there. Which I don't really use anyways, unless I'm just carrying it freehand, because I just tuck it in my watch pocket, and it just lives there. So, this guy, the biggest downfall is it doesn't really have a dedicated case. You could probably find one at Amazon that works, but that's, you know, iffy. Um, in fact, I have a case right here that might even work. That I haven't even, this is a Timu fidget toy. One of the rollers. It's a weird little speck of plastic jammed in there. Yeah, man run over it I guess stop fighting me stop resisting there that's what's, that's what's going on there there, there I found it a case that's <laughs> that's actually like perfect <laughs> okay I found a solution just look for like a battery case or um buy one of these weird little hand roller things that's kind of satisfying anyways there you go. That's I just found a fix on camera. Uh, probably took a charging cord and some headphones in there too. That's kind of cool. All right, I'm stupid. That was right on my desk this entire time, so that's wonderful. Anyhow, let's get into it. What have I done to modify these? I've added ROMs to some of them, not these two. I haven't had to mess with the ROMs. Um, this has a USB-C charging port. The SD card, which I replaced. This is off, so I'm going to show you. Um, I do know that the cards that come with tend to be faulty. So what I've done is I've taken out all the SD cards and basically all these devices except for this and so far. And I've replaced them with just SanDisk um, Nintendo Switch cards because that I've heard they're okay. Um, that's and they're wall they're at Walmart for cheap. So yeah, that freaking the cat hair is bothering me. Anyways. So this is a 64, uh, most of these have 128, 
and uh, you replace that, and it's just, it feels a little more reliable to me. This one doesn't actually have a headphone jack. I forgot about that. Um, I don't think this one does either. Some of the bigger ones do. Anyways, if I had to pick between these, I'd still probably wind up saying the Nano's better, but at the same time, it costs quite a bit more. Um, and the fact that you can print cases for it, there's multiple. Like, there's another one that's just, it covers the face. I'm actually planning on printing that. It's pretty cool. Um, and again, usability on this guy is a little bit lower, but the fact that it's a lot more durable and all the buttons just feel really good in comparison is an upside. Like, all these, also it has kind of like a watch face that it stops by before it turns off, which is kind of annoying. It's stubborn sometimes, and that's my biggest issue with it, really. There we go. And it has a manual shutdown with buttons, so, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> a system shutdown from, like, inside, so if you didn't want to have to deal with cycling through that, that's, you know. But the buttons feel amazing. Uh, if, from my understanding, the rubber membrane, they're just really high quality. Everything feels nice. It plays good. It feels sturdy. That's the biggest thing, is it's a very heavy little fella, and I like it. So that's our minis. I'm not going to cover any more on those right now. I might come back and do full reviews on them. Uh, that's basically all I need to say, though, I think. Uh, so let me, down, uh, let me know down in the comments whether you want to see more on that. Let's get into the bigger ones. Um, the Mayu Mini now. Uh, this guy has poor battery life when it comes to being on standby. It dies in a few hours. Uh, one thing is that its battery compartment is right here. You can just pull this guy out. You don't have to disassemble the whole device for it, so that's pretty cool. I'd say my biggest issue with the Mayu is where the triggers are. It just feels a little bit... I mean, at first it was a lot worse. Um, let's just hit Golden Sun here. Um, and all of these, actually all three of these, can play up to PS1. So that's kind of cool. I don't know what's going on here. I swear that's not a game I pushed, but you know, I have no idea. I don't know what I'm playing. The buttons feel great on this fella, I'll say that. The screen is nice. I wouldn't say it's the best screen on earth, but I really like how it's edge to edge, really. There's a little bit of a black bezel around it, but that's not too much of an issue. Uh, and mind you again, I'm not really playing to win here. I'm distracted because I'm talking to you guys. So, um, keys to the kingdom with this device are that the screen size is like perfect for Game Boy Advance. You don't have to mess with it at all. I like the OS that it comes with. I don't, I think it's just Mayu OS. Um, and then it has the, the power key is it's sleep, which I wouldn't recommend using. And then you can just hop onto the menu from here and you can save state on all of these. So even in games where you don't have a save, like if it's a password game, you can just save state and, uh, be done with it. So let's pop over to the hardest console with this to handle. And I believe that one actually be PS1. I don't know if this one has any PSP on it. I know some of them do. No, this one doesn't have PSP on it. I'm sure it could handle some, but not all of it. So let's just hit Resident Evil 3, which I've never played before. And see how this starts up with the, that. Now, one thing I will say is the buttons and the operation of this device are very nice. Um... These feel just very good. I don't think they're too clicky. I don't think there's too much travel, and they're really responsive. I like how it has kind of that old Game Boy feel with the uh, function button in the middle looking kind of like the screen brightness button on the Game Boy Advance SP. And then it has a volume dial instead of buttons, or with these guys, you don't actually have buttons at all. I should have mentioned that earlier, but what you do is you hit select, and then you press these that's um, brightness, and that's volume, I believe. Um, and it'll be up is up for brightness, and then right is up for sound, and then left is down, and down is down. But 
this guy has its own volume turner and uh, I believe you can change brightness from the setting. It, it really depends on which emulator it jumps into, from my understanding. They're all different, so that's the thing. I've been talking for quite a while. Let's just kind of speed through this. You can see it's, it's handling the graphics of Resident Evil here just fine. It might be a little bit dark on your end. You can't really tell. As for actual gameplay, I'm not sure. There we go. I always hate long, unskippable freaking intros. They're annoying. And I'm going to get into my two other devices here in just a second. Oh, well, eh. whatever. That's the Mayu. It's cool. It handles it. Uh, it feels very nice. It's plastic, but it just, it feels really nice. Like, there's something very satisfying about it in hand. Let's skip on to my first real, like, proper emulator, and this is still one of my favorites. Uh, of all of these, I'd say that between the XXH and the 405M, they're still my two favorites. Um, but I love all three of the minis that I've collected so far. I also have a Pow Kitty V90 floating around, but it just felt really underpowered and kind of flimsy. Uh, that's the clamshell design. Uh, if I can find it again, I'll, <laughs> I'll make a video on it. I think I did at some point, actually. All I really ever played on there was Doom. Mm. Uh, this guy is great. I like the selection it comes with game-wise. Again, I did flash the card. You had to make sure to put it in the right port, and that's kind of funky with this guy. You put it in one, and you can put more ROMs in number two. But the operation card has to be on the left. And then you have to charge it with the right cord. It has micro HDMI in the middle, a headphone jack, and a second USB-C. For what? I don't exactly know. Um, it does have its own volume buttons, which is nice. I like having volume buttons. Start, select. It does have joysticks, but it doesn't put a priority on them because that thumb pad is always going to be up there first. And um, we have very nice clicky buttons. They're not like clicky clicky. They're like rubber membrane. They just feel nice. I don't know that they're actually rubber membrane, but they just they do feel nice. The shoulder buttons are pretty clicky though. Um, I don't mind clicky buttons. Some people complain about them. That's not me. Um, my favorite game on here so far has been Dune, The Battle for Arrakis. This is a very fun little game. It's kind of reminiscent of StarCraft, which I could not get to play on here. But something really surprising, and I have heard if you change the operating system, you can get some more N64 to play on here. Um... Something really surprising is that I have managed to get a couple of games to play on here. Now, something I really like is that you can get the search function up. And the new OS is a little bit different. But right with this old one, which um, I still find okay. A lot of people said it was too limiting. But honestly, for someone as technically limited as me, it's worked out just fine. Uh, I've gotten... What was it? Rampage to work on here. Rampage World Tour. The search function is a very nice feature. Rampage puzzle attack. There's some old rampages on here, which are fun still. But World Tour from N64. This is a full-on N64 game, and it suffers only from very minor stuttering with absolutely no modification whatsoever. So it can handle a couple of N64 games. Um, I also got Battle Tanks, the original, to run on here without too much stuttering it was still pretty bad but it did run um and if we're talking budget i'd say that this is probably your best bet unless you really like the form factor of the mayu and right now you can get the v4 the small one i just i wanted the smaller form factor it's still very large in comparison to them uh the rg nano i just i liked that form factor i wanted it and it's a very nice little 
device for the price. I only paid $80 for it. I know that some places you'll pay like $120, $140 even because they're discontinued. Oh, this isn't the right one. <laughs> My bad. I forget that there's another world tour. Oh, come on. Actually, I'll just pull up the N64 emulator. All right, games. You look for the one that looks like an N64. There it is. There we go. World tour. And no, I couldn't get Road Rash to play on here either. Now, after a while with these smaller ones that can't handle big stuff, and this guy was $80 flat for it, was like $79. I ordered it all, almost all of these off Amazon, except for the Q36. I got that right from Power Kitty. Um, where was I? Right. I, was, I hit a point with the smaller standard emulators where I was just like, I want to be able to play games that I really played as a kid. Most of that was N64. Um, I'm a 2001 kid, so it's like... N64 was my bread and butter. It was that an original Xbox that I really lived on. And... Um, Stuff like this is just so painfully nostalgic for me. So here's Rampage on here. I know this is a very long video. If you're still with me, I appreciate it. I know I'm stupid. <laughs> but it's been, you know, kind of cool. I don't know. I'm trying to remember how... Oh, that's the button. There we go. It's funny how different systems kind of take buttons differently, but I, I got this to play on here. It's not, like, perfect. It's a little slow. But it definitely plays. The biggest issue is audio stuttering with this guy. You know, let me turn it up. It's actually running worse than last time I tried. Normally you can get it to play pretty good. It's funny how that works, is some days it's a little more picky than others. Most of the time when I go to play it on here, it's fine, though. It's interesting. This guy idles for a lot longer. I'd give it a whole day before it dies. And then, finally, the RG405M, which is where all of this led me to. And I've been playing games quite a bit on here. This guy is actually set up more like a phone. It runs on Android, which I'm not really used to myself. Let me actually save the slot here. It has a touch screen, which is cool. This guy is Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capable. So you hit that, and a lot of times you can actually just pull down. I can let this idle just like a phone for days at a time. Um, so we can just pop at it here and I have a big library of games just for the N64 but let's show you the main menu first and it again if you're familiar with Android you'll be very familiar with this it comes pre-installed with all of these emulators I mostly only use the N64 and the Game Boy Advance right now on here but I have only had it for a few weeks and I've just been really going at it with all of the games that I used to play as a kid on N64. It only came with a couple of N64 games natively, but getting more on here was not that much of an issue. So here's Road Rash, which is one that's particularly stressful um, for smaller devices. None of these could handle a game like this. You got that. And then I found the controls a little funky when it came to attacks because you have to use this joystick. It's the second set of arrows for N64 that used to be next to the buttons. Um, but it functions just fine. There's no real lag. Not really. I had none more than my actual N64 had when I was growing up. The sound is great. The buttons are great. Everything functions. And you can see that this was really built to have a joystick First and foremost, like they put it up there because that's what you're going to be relying on. And um, it kind of shows in design, like they thought, yeah, if this is capable of playing games that really had joysticks, then we should put it in a better place. And um, the fact that it can play a game like Road Rash, I've played, I've played all these games on here. 
uh, 007, The World Is Not Enough, Air, Army Men, Air Combat, and uh, Surge's Heroes 1, Body Harvest, which is kind of stupid, and never played it before, but it downloaded it, Shadows of the Empire, that's just a good game right there, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, um, War Gods, Bio Freaks, Army Men, yeah, Off-Road Challenge, which is just a classic, and it just handles all of it. So I'm going to say this. Um, if you want something tiny and you want it to be durable, go with the Nano. If you want something tiny and you want it to be playable, go with the Q36. If you want something small, very pocketable, and reliable, go with the Mayu. But keep in mind that idling it is a bad idea. And if you want something budget but comfortable and enjoyable, I would definitely go with the um, RG35XXH. And lastly, if you have 200 bucks, in my case 185 because Amazon runs sales sometimes, um, just snag a 405M because it's solid, it feels great in hand, it plays great, and I haven't had any issues so far. The battery life is awesome. I've even dropped it once and it took it like a champ. There's just a little tiny deflection on the side of the shell there. And uh, it's metal. It's heavy. You don't want to be dropping it. And um, last thing is to be aware of, I did drop this guy hard while it was in its case once. It was on a cement floor. I didn't mean to. And um, of course I didn't mean to. I had to figure out what was wrong with it because I couldn't get it to charge. And this is something that looking it up did not help with at all. Uh, I had a lot of people saying a lot of things like, oh, use this charger, use that charger, use this brick, use that brick. Make sure the amperage lines up. And none of that helped at all. The actual issue was when I dropped it, the impact slightly severed the battery cable. So what I did was I took it apart. And this is my kind of last ditch attempt at fixing it was I took it apart I got the shell, and then I just looked at the cable, and I'm like, yeah. I pulled it out, I plugged it back in, and it's been right as rain ever since. So, keep in mind a hard drop can sever cables. Uh, it's a budget device, it's not really meant to be tossed around like that. But, with just a minimal amount of effort, some Torx screws to get through. And, um, ingenuity, just thinking of it, um... I got it working right as rain again. So, for more in-depth reviews, please ask me if you want to see more. Uh, ones I'd like to cover are the 405M, the Nano, the Mayu, and the uh, 35 here. This has been a really long-ass video. I feel like I've been talking for hours. Thank you for watching. Keep in mind the giveaway is starting today, and today is... April 1st, so this is not an April Fool's Day thing. Keep in mind, I'm actually just starting it today. Um, have a good one, guys.